You know what I'm saying? Well, let's go back a little bit in time, Mr. Renfro, if you will, uh, because you've been a gentleman who has been here, uh, I guess, uh, born, bred, raised, and whatnot in Cleveland, Tennessee, and just came up I-75 to the University of Tennessee, I guess. Yes, can we go back all the way back to when I was young and happy and barefoot? Take us there, brother. Full of, <laughs> full of song. Sure. Well, what else has changed? Nothing's changed, has I'm exactly it? the same guy. And you're wearing except, shoes. Uh, not as likable. I'm wearing a fez. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, again, you, you were here back in the 70s when the strip was kind of really starting to come to life and actually had some live music venues. What a concept. Um, yeah, I landed in Knoxville in 1971, the year that Winfield Dunn changed the drinking age to 18. <laughs> and guess what, what age I turned well, what, that fall? Timing is everything. Thing, yeah. isn't it timing is everything would it have mattered it? anyway though i mean yeah. uh i'm sure we i was drinking beer in cleveland before that so uh it, but you it, it made it easier when you could go in there yourself and buy it sure um but uh yeah lots and lots of bands on the strip um it was it was a few fatback was was probably sure. the big band at that time and uh, rich mountain tower oh yeah uh, of course, Fatback sort of morphed into the Amazing Rhythm Aces, and uh, 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 Rich Mountain Tower is a really underappreciated band from that era. They were they were doing the big production music that the Eagles would be doing right. later. Uh, uh, highly produced, you know, big band, seven or eight guys. Um, of course, Jack Aranda was another big band that was more uh, sort of a, the Southern rock sound. Sure. Um, Rich Mountain Tower was into the uh, more of an Americana sound before you, before that was a big thing. I mean, banjos and mandolins and and that sort of thing was not common uh, at, at that time. The Birds' "Sweetheart of the Rodeo" I think was probably the only major band that was making that kind of effort at that time. Right. Bob Dylan, of course, with Nashville Sk Skyline was was playing with that milieu, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was a lot going on, and then it got better and better. Uh, you had groups like uh, uh, the Lonesome Coyotes were coming along. Uh, David O'Dell's Bull Rooker was a, a big band at the time. Uh, Charlie Manishmet was in that group. Uh, he's still playing around with, and his his brother Jay, I think. Uh, uh, they all they they all play with Maggie Longmire these days. Maggie was in Lonesome Coyotes, of course. Yep. Um, uh, of course, R.B. was starting to come along at that time with some right. of his bands, Shaky Littlefinger and. Um, um, I'm going blank on the other band that he had at that time, but R.B. at any rate um, was a big. Of course, I, I just went up to him and started talking to him yeah. at a show. I, I played the real groupie, and we just became immediate friends from like '75, '76 on. It's not hard being an R.B. groupie, is it? No, no, <laughs> it really it's, isn't. Uh, man. It's not all that degrading. No, no, no. not that bad. Um, well, I, obviously... You just need to remember to shower. Yeah, that's a good thing in life in general. But Well, I know you, you've always had a fondness, uh, and we have spoken of this and enjoyed some live as well, for uh, for reggae and in particular ska music. And you, you dabbled in that yourself, didn't you? Yeah, the band, uh, as it turns out, I, I, I'd always wanted to play bass, and I sort of could... As, as somebody once told me, you're all thumbs, Rent Fro. <laughs> But uh, I stayed with it, and uh, I learned my, my scales and stuff and, and uh, played in folky kind of bands over the years. And uh, then I met up with Jim Myers, who still plays on the sort of folk circuit around here, and we put together Cheap Shoes with a drummer named Vic Davis. And uh, we, we like to say we were the first reggae band, homegrown reggae band in town. Sure. And uh, we've all just dearly loved reggae, but I think we were a little bit ahead of our time, and 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 uh, the punk thing was hitting. So everybody sure. was, it was the yin and the yang, and we were the we were, we were not the groove that everybody wanted to hear, except the, the handful of people that really dug reggae. Right. But uh, it was the punk era, and you just kind of had to get out of the way of that because that was it was the '80s, and it was time for that. But. Uh, now, if we'd only stuck together, we'd we'd be we'd be big. Yep, yep, huge, huge in Knoxville. Yeah. Well, tell me, uh, you know, well, let's go back a and, little and bit. And also, that's yeah. sort of the ba the basis for the the word apocalypso, is a, a sort of a, a, a borrows on my interest in um, eschatological themes, but in a happy way. Sure. Based sure. on uh, you know, if we're gonna if we're headed toward the end of the world, we should at least dance. Yeah. Make it a limbo dance or and, something. And try to be in tune, at least, and Bob's taking care of that. So let's go back a little bit to RB. 
Arby has had such an influence on not just this scene, but this town for so long in so many ways. Um, and, you know, obviously he was influenced a lot by, if you will, the beat poets of, of the day back in, in and, uh, and, and just writing in general. I mean, it just, you know, writing all this, obviously songwriting falls back on writing, but it, the, the music you're doing and how he influenced you, um, you know, that, like you said, it was just something that uh, it was easy to do. I, yeah, easy to be an RB groupie. Um, and although he's not making as much music today as he used to, um, that influence is still just as strong today in this market, and obviously with what you do. Isn't it? Yeah, well, we, I'm sure we haven't. We've we've hardly heard the, the last of from uh, R.B. But, Absolutely. Uh, he keeps getting better and better. Every album he puts out, just it's like, where does this come from? He keeps he he he's really sacrificed to make sure. this incredible music and uh, this incredible blend of literature and music that he does. And uh, I'm I'm just thankful uh, that I that I met him and that we uh, were two like souls that were interested in the same sorts of things uh, mainly the writing and the blending writing and music together uh, in different ways yeah but, not uh, your typical but, ways if you will but but we were you know part of a crowd that, that dug the the we looked up to Kerouac and Corso and uh, Burroughs and that whole crowd and that and those guys got up and played a red poetry to a saxophone player or, sure. or a, a bongo player or whatever and I mean it's, it seems like a cliche now, in, in the in the context of uh, looking back at it, it's easy to easy to satirize that sort of thing. Sure. But uh, at the time, it was very genuine and very ex creative thing, just like the explosive creativity you get in the '80s with the punk scene. Right, and very influential. Like yeah. You say. I mean, hugely influential as well, and still remains to be this day. Um, and, and we talked a little off microphone too. We just lost, if you will, somebody from the musical scene such as that uh, last week, I guess it was Gil Scott Heron. Who, yeah, Gil know. Scott Heron was definitely a, a, a early hero of mine. And, and in fact, I do a piece called Damascus by Sundown that uh, pretty deliberately pays homage to uh, uh, Gil Scott Heron with uh, the line that's a paraphrase, a riff on, on the, one of his themes. I, I use the, the, the phrase, have you heard the word from Gettysburg? Which is uh, not not his line, but it's it's obviously yeah. a homage to his Johannesburg line. So. Absolutely, and timely with the whole Civil War kind of yeah. you know thing, is which which you've delved in as well with some some stuff written about the Fort Sand Battle of Fort Sanders, I guess, right? Yeah, I've always been too? interested in the Civil War, and uh, over the years the, that that interest has has proven to me how important it is that we uh, avoid a war. Yeah, as it'd be much nice. As possible. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? What a concept. Well, I know in losing Gil Scott here, and sometimes when that happens. Folks either rediscover or even discover somebody like him for the first time, as good or bad as that could be. You know, I mean, you you, you wish they discovered him before he <laughs> yeah. before he passed on, but at the same time, I mean, it would have been nice if he, his life hadn't been so hard yeah. on him. Uh, yeah. But he and the last poets, and I, I think there's a, a, a tradition in, in black culture to, that that really nurtures the whole idea of, of of spoken word. Sure. And you see that now with hip hop and 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 the, the full flowering of it coming about in that way but even in jamaican the, the re going back to the reggae thing there was the a subset of reggae called toasting which was the originator of of hip-hop in a way it was just guys yeah. rap rapping over uh, a drum and bass track and right. they would just go do this at parties and and uh, that was they'd get 50 bucks or whatever and and a beans and rice and and there was a whole culture that came up out of that and, and the whole studio one thing and 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 it became a a, a huge a genre of its own right right a yeah. literature set to music and maybe if they were performing in front of the right crowd they might get a spliff mon out of the gig you never know so sure. <laughs> well all this leads up to, to where we are today with the apocalypse quartet of course your gigs tonight are performing in and around town but as far as recorded works if somebody wanted to go online and hear something uh, you know, there's this whole intranet thing that's finally catching on. Uh, you've got that whole social networking gig. Are there ways folks can go on the internet and hear a little bit more of your performances? And then are you looking to maybe get a CD together or any, any would, of that coming together? I would love together? to make a, a real recording someday. I have some tracks on uh, Reverb Nation. Uh, there are some, it's mixed quality. Some of it's just live, one, single mic recordings, and some of it was uh, recorded in a studio. Uh, it's a mixed bag. Uh, Todd Steed very graciously uh, recorded me with uh, Phil Pollard and Joel Greenlee. Yeah. Uh, I think I sent a couple of those tracks to you. Yep, uh, we were playing and, one. And those, uh, then Adam Bucko from uh, The Big Deuce recorded 
a track uh, a few months ago and but uh, none of these are on on a single cd that you can buy unfortunately i'm just really uh disorganized i've just <laughs> never gotten around to it and maybe nowadays that the uh, business is uh, not uh, there's no business to the business maybe i can do it myself through one of these uh, uh fundraiser online fundraising programs i think we've got things that ain't funny and in rotation. Oh, yeah, this one, I, this one I, I really owe to the vision of uh, um, Adam Bucko. He, he uh, really did a beautiful piece with this. Uh, Member of the Big the Deuce. Bass player for the Big Deuce. Uh, my girlfriend is the singer for that band, and she will be selling the Rain Crow t-shirts tonight. We don't want to leave that out. She will be Absolutely. running the uh, merch table for me. Very cool. So start your holiday shopping early this year That's at right. Preservation Pub this it evening. It goes to a good and cause, tonight. Me. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, we hope you get to, you get that recording done, man. We hope so, and, and we'll help get the word out about it. Obviously, we'll be more than uh, excited and happy to play it as well. Jack Renfro and the Apocalypso Quartet again tonight. Down at Preservation Pub from 6 to 7.30, then up north central into Happy Holler. They'll be taking over the uh, Relic stage about 10, but that all cranks up about 8 o'clock. Speaking of cranking up, you got one more you can do on the way out of here, man? What do you, you think? Wanna, you, you got another try one? To wing it. Ably assisted by Bob Deck on the six string, and a beautiful six string that is, by the way, Bob. Yeah, thank you. Nice get box, man. Love it. Uh, everything about Bob is beautiful. It's class. <laughs> Class. He's man. a farmer. Total you class. Know, it keeps you honest. That's no fun these days in 95 uh -huh. degree Brutal. heat with no rain. <laughs> He's out there watering by hand. <laughs> Does that? When I water by hand, it usually means something else. But um. By triangulation, I found her south and west of Europe and the old diaspora. South and west of Plymouth Rock in a hard place. Carolina's cast off daughter. A huge hide of land now separating with filthy lakes and stapled with interstates across her centerfold mountain midriff. Fat chance, Franklin. Nice try, Cumberland. So long, Miro District. Tell the Watagans to forget it. So here are we, wayward and futile, between the father of waters and the mother of mountains, keeper of all music, witness to the Louisiana Purchase, harbinger of Texas, murderer of Meriwether Lewis, Hearthstone of rustic imperialists like Jackson, Walker, and Polk. Her clay turned red by the bleeding of her sons. And still the ancient clans of Caledonia speak through her three-starred precept. She is vaguely referred to as a stripper named Manifest Destiny in a CD produced by a Cherokee comedian who was very famous in prehistoric times. Between hell and high water and the devil and the oil dark sea or the DUI litter crew cleaning up this side of Highway 33, whatever she is, I discovered her. I can still hear the ocean in the cowrie shells buried in her limestone bluff. Right on. Jack Renfro live in studio with Bob Deck. Jack Renfro and the Apocalypso Quartet. Well, guys, enjoyed it. Really, really Pleasure. appreciate it. Absolutely. Have fun tonight, Jack. Keep up the good work. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to more music and more musings from the Apocalypso Quartet, fronted by Mr. Jack Renfro.